This episode has been made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in this episode's description. Hello and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. Tesla has released the Model Y rear wheel drive, rear wheel drive long range, and all wheel drive long range in Europe for the new generation Model Y. Now I have here to help me go through this. Jordan, you just got to drive the new Model Y. How are you doing? Right. Yeah, it's great. It seems to be like just Model Y week around here. A few of us around the Outspec office have test driven it. And like you said, we've seen launch edition uh, reservations really filling up. Apparently, um, we've seen the white interior go out of stock completely, uh, at least here in the US. So I'm curious to see if the US follows trend. But at least now we can comment on Europeans uh, addition of the new trims, because that's what a lot of people have been waiting for. For a lot of people, launch edition at 60 grand here in the US. US was too expensive. They don't want to be forced into all the upgrades that it does come with, arguably for a bit of a bargain. But either way, some a lot of people have been looking for the rear-wheel drive and all-wheel drive variants, and now we see two rear-wheel drive variants, at least for Europe. We don't know what all will translate to the US, but this is a, a good thing to pick apart and see if we can either guess or speculate, but at least we can comment on European news for this. Right. And to Help us break it down. Willem has actually made this spreadsheet here with the European Model Y configurations. So you see the rear wheel drive, zero to 60 in 5.9 seconds. Um, that's a bit better than the 6.9 seconds that it was previously on the last gen rear wheel drive. And then of course, LFP battery, 175 kilowatts peak. Of course, it's the rear wheel drive, not long range. So base interior with the base speakers. So I oh. also have the nine speaker base system um, and comparing it, I think I think it's probably going to be fine for most people. Um, it, I love my Model 3. Like it's not like, you know, some automakers have a premium sound system. That's a completely different sound system with Tesla. The approach is a bit different. It's just additional speakers for a slightly fuller experience, including a subwoofer for a much fuller bass experience. Yes, the new Model Y has an insanely good stereo system, 15 speakers plus subwoofer. Um, the original press materials that they handed Kyle when he did his walk around video said 16 speakers plus subwoofer. That was a typo as it turns out. So it is 15 speakers plus a sub. It's phenomenal. But that being said, if you don't care about having all that bass, um, the nine speakers are still really high quality speakers. You're not getting just a worse quality sound system. So I, I think that'll be fine for most people. I don't know how to comment on the base interior because I haven't seen actual photos of it, but the, the premium interior is very nice. So I'm curious if anyone will spring for the all wheel drive because of that. I just don't think here in the U S uh, rear wheel drive, AKA two wheel drive SUVs are as popular. It seems like everyone once all wheel drive just in case so all wheel drive seems to be the the option that a lot of people end up choosing um same thing rear wheel drive long range zero to 60 5.6 seconds and that is improved from 5.9 seconds previously uh, of course upgraded speakers base interior and nmc 250 kilowatts peak now Long range all wheel drive, which is what you drove with the launch edition demo, right? Yeah, which is a uh, long range all wheel drive with performance boost. So this is kind of a look at the non performance boost. And I guess a, a interesting slight caveat is we're reading the zero to 100 kph, which is technically like zero to right. 61, 62 miles an hour. So these numbers may be a tenth different. Um, Nears makes no difference, honestly. But yeah, this is a, a glimpse at, okay, this is how much slower the all-wheel drive would be without performance boost. Still pretty, plenty quick in my opinion. Even the rear-wheel drive, honestly, I think it's quick enough. I did drive the LFP Model 3 before they discontinued it, the rear-wheel drive standard range. That was a bit slower than my rear-wheel drive long range. Same type of difference as we're seeing here. And it did make enough of a difference to where I feel like my car is quick enough. Sure, it's no speed demon. It's a it's a single motor EV, but I think for most people they're gonna be like, wow, 
look at this power because they're coming from like a CRV or something. So the, I guess the big difference here does feel like, do you want LFP battery or the normal NMC uh, LG pack that we all know and love? I think the Panasonic pack is the weaker one of the two. Um, or do I have that backwards? I get them confused all the time. But um, either way, this is the LG pack, which charges slightly different than the Panasonic pack. I don't think most people will notice because not everyone's always road tripping like it feels like we are here out of spec but the range difference in variety this is these are all numbers we could probably fairly accurately extrapolate over to the u.s for comparison so it's nice to see um notably no seven seat mentioned here or have you seen that no um, no mention of the seven seat i kind of look here on the creator here but you'll see no mention of seven seat now again this is uh, this is the European spec. So maybe yep. that'll change for the U S yeah. Maybe the U S is the only one that wants the seven seat. Um, and I'm curious, does the spec determine which wheels you're allowed to get? Because at the moment you have the rear wheel drive spec and it only shows the 19 inch cross flows. Whereas if you jump up to the all wheel drive, you get the helix right. 2.0, which is the one I drove it with. Does the other rear wheel drive one give you the option to upgrade as well? The rear wheel drive, Yes. Long range? yes. Okay. So basically only the LFP ultimate standard range, um, the cheapest one possible. There's not even a way to add the other wheels. Um, color wise, it also seems comparable to what we get in the U S notably a missing, um, no, uh, blue color, gl glacier blue, whatever they were calling it. That's also missing in that configurator. So Bit of a bummer because I think a lot of people were excited about those early photos of that blue color, which seems to be in China, but um, notably not here in the U.S. Although ultra red looks fantastic, Quicksilver I think will look really nice. I think the, the lack of colors is a bummer, but at least they do interesting looking paints. Yeah, I think this this ultra red really stands out. What do you prefer, this ultra red or that deep uh, cherry? The this here. I yeah, I don't know actually. I I think ultra red's better. I think it's just a nice deep red, similar to Mazda's recent red colors. It's just a really gorgeous pure red. And I'm not even much of a red car person, but when I drove the ultra red with the Helix 2.0 wheels and the new Model Y, it just really looked nice. Um, but I guess you could pick black or the the other dark gray color that they always keep changing the name of and wrap it to something else you might like. Uh, those are those are easy colors to wrap, I would say. Um, but is there any color that's free or are they all? Uh, okay, I guess white is the only free color, which is interesting because on the Model 3, at least when I ordered, Stealth Gray was the only free color. Yeah, Tesla seems to change it every time. It seems like every other quarter. It's in between the pearl white and the Stealth Gray between what's, uh, what's free. I would say in terms of pricing, because this is in Europe, and of course these Model Ys are made in Berlin, so pricing could be a bit different. Um, I want to see here if I could maybe take like a good look at what that pricing would look like. So the current rear wheel drive model Y is without incentives or gas savings, $44,990. Now the new gen rear wheel drive in uh, Berlin, well, sorry, the new rear wheel drive in Germany is 49,770 euros. And then if I take that and I translate it to USD, that relates to about 52,000 US dollars. So if pricing stays consistent with what we see in Europe, um, particularly Germany, then you could be looking at about 50,000 for the rear wheel drive Model Y. I think it's expected that we'll see a price change, an updated price, increased price from the current generation Model Ys, but hopefully it's nothing too steep um, of course, Tesla's trying to keep the Model Y pretty competitive with the other mid-sized electric SUVs and mid-sized SUVs period that are out there. But with a new vehicle, will come new pricing and there could be some hype. And as usual, Tesla tends to update the price depending on what demand is looking like. So we could see that decrease as time goes on. So is there, do they put any interior photos of the non-premium interior? Yeah. So that gives you kind of a clear idea. So the long range all wheel drive interior, you can see in the second row here, it seems that the material and 
door panel changes. And that's something we see similar in the Model 3 as well, right? The all-wheel drive uh, long range has a more premium interior, uh, but it doesn't seem like there is a dramatic change elsewhere. But you can just see on the panel there. It yeah, changes. it's like the door panel is the only major thing changing. Uh, of course, we'd have to like touch and feel the materials. Maybe they're using something a bit nicer um, as far as how it feels in person, but it's hard to extrapolate from the website. That's really interesting. Either way, they do look a bit different than here in the US, uh, but maybe that's just looking at the dark interior. Can you select, is there a white interior option on this? So we're getting the white interior here on the LFP, but it looks like there isn't a change. If I go to the long range and then go to white interior again, it doesn't look like yeah. a, there's much of a change in the interior when you actually pick the white interior. So regardless, if you pick the white interior, it looks like it could be the, the same. Yep. So it'll be interesting to see how well these sell, which one will sell the best. I do think a lot of people were just waiting for kind of the middle two trims. I don't know if LFP will sell that well unless they price it really well, or even if it will come to the US. This is, again, slight speculation with um, European market and the differentiation between the US market uh, as far as what sells well. I, it feels like US people just want maximum range. Um, and sometimes all-wheel drive. Really depends on the price disparity. But it looks like they won't be too big of a price difference, kind of like the Model 3. So I do expect dual motor to be the big seller like it is here in the U.S. And I do expect the prices to be more than what we're seeing on those. Because people have pointed out, like, oh my gosh, the new Model Y is sixty grand, whereas the performance of the... Well, just performance listed there, which is the older Model Y, is like fifty two grand. Um, but I think the prices will be higher than the old one, but still maybe less than launch edition just because they're not going to be bundling in fsd and all the different options that you can spec at the launch edition without changing the price there and also bringing this up on screen here you'll see that the a long range all-wheel drive delivery starting here soon march now we're actually already starting to see uh deliveries and vins and people starting the payment process for their launch edition model wise in the United States. I wonder if that's the same for Europe, probably the same reason why they've kind of stopped the launch edition um, orders, but you'll see the long range rear wheel drive June and then rear wheel drive May through June. But of course it's in Europe. So because we're getting our model Ys from Fremont and Austin, we could see a bit of a different delivery timeline, but unlike the model three, the, the timelines here between the different countries that are rolling out the Model Y is a lot more similar than what we, we saw with the Model 3. Well, thank you so much for going that with me, Jordan. Hopefully this comes soon to the United States and I can kind of get a good look at what we're looking like in terms of pricing among the new Model Y, also in terms of trims, because as we've mentioned, rear wheel drive options with the rear wheel drive regular and long range we might not see in the United States with the Model Y, but who knows? It might be a striated approach like they did with the Highland Model 3, where we had rear-wheel drive initially, then they added long-range rear-wheel drive after that. Or maybe they'll do them all together, or maybe they'll just pick the long-range, because I don't think LFP sold that well here anyways. So we'll have to see. Time will tell. I'm also very curious about the seven-seat option, because I've sat in the seventh six and seven seat third row of a model y uh, outgoing generation and it was really really hilariously tight i uh, i'm expecting similar but like it'd be curious to see if it was better um so we'll see if that comes at launch as well so of course this is just the european stuff we're talking about now but as soon as word is out with the u.s launch we'll have another show um diving into all of those details Awesome. And the next big thing is performance. I think that's going to be the next big thing for a lot of people, seeing what that looks like in terms of design, but also power and, and range and how that compares to the Model 3 performance. Right. So, yeah, that's it. Model awesome. Y is just cascading around the world right now, it seems. Right. Um, I, I'm sure in a year it will be like, wow, that was such old news. It's such a boring car now. But at the moment, it's exciting because it is technically the best selling car in the world and getting major updates is very welcomed because it was the best selling car in the world but not the best car in the world. Now it's definitely getting better. I welcome that. Awesome. These updates are exciting. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Jordan. Guys, this is the Out of Spec Podcast. My name is Isaiah, and I will see you guys in the next one.